Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome here to the Launchpad. And we're glad to have you joining us here today for the launch of SDA Tranchi Zero, the first launch of the Space Development Agency of the U.S. Pentagon. We're glad to have you joining us live here today. Here at TLP, it's our mission to inform and inspire the explorers of tomorrow because we believe that space is better together. And we're at T minus 13 minutes, 15 seconds, and counting until a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket lifts off from Space Launch. Complex 4E at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. Today we're going to see a Falcon 9 Booster 1075 fly on its second flight. Its first flight occurred back in January for a Starlink mission from Vandenberg. And if you want to know more about today's mission, as always, you can head over to tlpnetwork.com, check out our detailed mission briefing, and learn more about today's vehicle, the rocket, and everything there. But as you can see, SpaceX is getting ready to go live here is this is a customer mission starting a little bit earlier here so we'll get to see the whole final countdown of today's falcon 9 targeting liftoff time 7 29 a.m local time this is an instantaneous launch window here today the Falcon 9 booster will be returning to landing site, landing zone 4 at space uh, at Vandenberg Space Force Base. As always, it is a launch day, which means you can head on over to the TLP shop and get 10% off of everything over in the shop. And make sure you join us over on the TLP Discord. That's where our community hangs out uh, after launches and before launches. And we're glad to see you over there. But as always, we get started. Take a moment. Let us know in the chat where you're watching from. I'd love to welcome you here and subscribe so you never miss another live launch coverage, docking, undocking, or return to Earth. We know this was a little bit of a last minute uh, stream being scheduled. Uh, my internet service provider was saying that we were going to be offline uh, and we weren't sure when we were going to come back but we're glad that we've got the internet back and we're ready to go for launch here this morning and glad to have you with us lots of people tuning in we got Jim Treese in Greece Fairgrounds is in Cornwall we've got Makoder in Germany Hermione's in Netherlands we got Blayton in Australia Helen's in the UK glad to have you all joining us here as you can see SpaceX getting ready to go live here running through their intro so we're gonna be listening in the SpaceX mission control for an update on the vehicle and the payload as we continue towards launch now 11 minutes 11 seconds and counting as always throughout today's stream you can send in your comments and questions in the chat by tagging us at the launch pad and we'll work on answering those to the best of our ability through today's stream we're getting a little bit more update on when the payload deployment will occur we may or may not be able to see it as this is a mission for the pentagon but as we continue through the final count make sure let's listen in to spacex mission control for an update stay with us thursday march 30th 2023 and on your screen is a live view of the falcon 9 as it waits for its 7 29 a.m pacific time launch from slick 4e from vandenberg space force base off the coast of california my name is Jonathan Dweck, and I'm an operations engineer here at SpaceX, joining you from our headquarters about 150 miles south of our launch site. Today's launch marks SpaceX's 221st launch overall, our 22nd launch of the year, and our second launch just this week. Our customer today is the Space Development Agency, also known as the SDA. The SDA Tranche Zero mission will send eight transport layer and two tracking layer satellites to low Earth orbit today. Today's mission is in support of the SDA's overall constellation called the Proliferated Warfighter Space Architecture, or PWSA for short. The SDA prioritizes speed by leveraging commercial advances and delivering capabilities on two-year timelines with the goal of quickly delivering space-based capabilities to support terrestrial missions through development, fielding, and operation of the PWSA. The payload on board the second stage today, Tranche Zero, will allow combatant commands to start to develop their exercise and operational plans around access to data they can expect to receive from future tranches of their constellation. It's also worth mentioning, at the request of our customer, we will not be sharing any views from the second stage today, and we'll therefore end our webcast at around the T plus eight minute mark, shortly after Falcon 9 touches back down onto land. At T minus nine minutes, the range is currently ready to support. Weather is currently at a 40% chance of violation, but we are proceeding with an on-time liftoff today at 7.29 a.m. Pacific. And finally, the vehicle and payload are in good health. 
Let's now turn our attention to a brief explanation of orbital mechanics. If you're not too familiar with getting to orbit actually means, here's a quick overview. In order to get the rocket and our payload into orbit, the rocket has to not only go up really fast, it also has to go sideways. As we ascend, we tilt the engines, technical term being gimbling, and that turns the rocket horizontally. We're still going up, but now we're also heading horizontally away from the launch pad. It's what we call a gravity turn. The rocket typically needs to go around 17,500 miles per hour horizontally in order to avoid being pulled back down to Earth and get into orbit. To help demonstrate this concept, imagine firing a cannon from a really high mountain. The cannonball will arc, and then gravity will pull it down to Earth. As you increase the power, the cannonball will arc will land farther and farther away. Eventually, if you could continue to increase the power, the cannonball will be going so fast that it ends up in free fall around the Earth. Gravity is still pulling down on the cannonball, but it's going so fast that it never hits the ground. This arc, which constantly misses Earth, is called an orbit. So when we get to liftoff today, we'll watch the orientation of Falcon 9. You'll see we go straight up until about T plus 10 seconds, at which point we begin that shift in orientation so Falcon 9 can go sideways really fast. So be sure to keep an eye out in just a few minutes. Located at the very top of Falcon 9 on your screen, we have the payload fairing. It measures approximately 40 feet in length and 17 feet in diameter. To put that size into perspective, an average fire truck is about 40 feet long and 12 feet wide. So a fire truck would fit quite comfortably inside our payload fairing. While on Earth, the fairing's primary job is to protect the payload from contamination. Then, at liftoff and through ascent, the fairing will also shield against aerothermal loads and heating. Once we reach the vacuum of space, we will jettison the fairing, and the second stage will continue on its journey into orbit. The fairing half supporting today's mission are flight proven, with one half flying for its sixth time and the other half flying for its fourth. Below the payload fairing is the second stage, which is responsible for propelling the payload to its drop-off orbit in space. Not only does SpaceX's second, sorry, second stage look similar to the first stage, that larger stage below, it also has the same diameter, uses the same metal in the tanks, same computers, same propellant, and nearly the same engine. This allows us to use similar tooling, design, and systems, which results in greater efficiency and reliability. The first and second stages are connected by the interstage, which houses the pneumatic pushers that allow stage separation during flight. The interstage also houses the second stage engine called the Merlin Vacuum Engine, or MVAC engine for short. And as a reminder, for today's launch, we will not be sharing any views from the second stage at the request of our customer, and we'll be ending our webcast at around the T plus eight minute mark, shortly after Falcon 9 makes its way back down onto land. Making our way down the rocket, the bottom two thirds of the vehicle is the first stage and is the primary part of the rocket that gets reused multiple times. On the bottom of the first stage are nine Merlin M1D engines that accelerate the vehicle through Earth's atmosphere and that enable landing back on Earth following stage separation. The first stage supporting today's mission is flying for the second time today, having previously supported a past Starlink mission. And today, we'll attempt to recover the first stage back on land at landing zone four, which you're seeing on your screen now. If successful, this would mark our 183rd overall successful recovery of an orbital class rocket, including both Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy first stage landings. So far, we're at T minus five minutes and counting, and all systems are go for an on time liftoff. The, ri the 9 tanks are pressurizing for a strong back retract. The range is currently ready to support. The weather is still a 40% chance of violation, but we're still proceeding with an on time liftoff today. And the vehicle and payload continue to be healthy. If for some reason we're unable to launch today, we do have a backup opportunity tomorrow at the same time. Next up, the truss structure next to the vehicle, known as the transporter erector, or TE, will start to retract. The transporter erector is that truss structure nest to the rocket that is used to roll out and to route propellants and electrical power to the vehicle in preparation for launch. In preparation for retraction, as the TE clamps 
arms will open, as you're seeing on your screen now, and the transporter erector will then begin to pull away from the rocket slightly. Then, at T0, hydraulics pull the transporter erector even further away from Falcon 9 as it lifts off. And as you can see, the TE has started to attract away from the vehicle. At this point in the countdown, both the first and the second stages are nearly fully loaded with one million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen, or LOX. Those white clouds that you're seeing around the outside of the vehicle are completely normal. During propellant loading, we vent cold gas that forms above the LOX tank surface. And what you're seeing is a result of that cold gas coming in contact with the warmer California air and condensing. Both first stage and second stage should finish loading propellant at about a minute apart from one another. First stage finishing up at T minus three minutes and second stage at around T minus two minutes. Then at T minus 60 seconds, Falcon 9 will be in start. Stage one locks load is complete. Heard that com call out for locks load complete on our first stage. Stage one pogo. This means the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers have taken over the launch countdown. Once we approach T minus 60 seconds, just inside of two seconds, we light the Merlin 1D engines and we're set for liftoff. The SDA Tranche Zero payload continues to be healthy and the Falcon 9 team is currently tracking no issues on the rocket. So let's listen in to the terminal count. If you're just joining we're approaching us, we're approaching load completion. If you're just joining us, welcome. We're now at T minus two minutes, 22 seconds and counting well into the final propellant loading and closeouts as we count down to launch of the first launch for the Space Development Agency, a new agency within the U.S. Pentagon launching on a SpaceX Falcon 9. As always, here at the launch pad, you know what we do at the T minus two minute mark. Let's see that go, no go in the chat and listen into SpaceX as we go through the terminal count. in that call out of stage two locks load completion momentarily. Stage two locks load is complete. And there you heard it, locks load is now complete on our second stage. As a reminder, those white clouds that you see venting from our TE, that's completely normal. Next up, we're approaching startup. That'll occur in around 30 seconds from now. Gorgeous shot of our launch site. Falcon 9 is in startup. There you heard that call out. Falcon 9's onboard flight computers have taken control of the launch countdown. Now we're just waiting to hear from our launch director. LD is go for launch. You heard the call out there. All systems are go for launch of Falcon 9 and Space Development Agency Tranche Zero. Let's sit back and watch as Falcon 9 heads into space. T minus 30 seconds. Fifteen seconds. T minus ten, nine, eight, seven, six. Five, four, three, two, abort. Abort, abort, abort. Launch abort is running. And we have had an abort in the final seconds of the count. T minus three seconds holding. We'll listen for an update. Yeah. I get to go. If you've been following along, you know we had an abort during the launch countdown at around the T minus three second mark. Prior to that countdown, it was countdown was proceeding nominally. Now please stand by while we check in with the teams to see if we can get more information. 
And if you're just joining us, welcome here to the launch pad. We were T minus three seconds in counting until the maiden. On countdown one, this we've had an abort. Uh, currently assessing the situation. Um, the vehicle is healthy. So you heard their vehicle is healthy. This was a launch for a new agency within the U.S. Pentagon, the Space Development Agency. Launching a total of 12 to 14 satellites on board, not much more known. Uh, we do know these were the first satellites for the SDA as part of their new tracking and reconnaissance system. We did have it listed as an instantaneous launch window, but we'll see if there's another possible opportunity later today. As these were the first satellites in a launch system, it is possible they could go for a recycle. And we'll continue to wait for an update or a, an official scrub here in the next few minutes. As always, if you have questions, you can send those in the chat by taking us. If you following a, along, you image. know we had an abort during the countdown at the T minus three second mark. We just heard from our launch director. The vehicle and payload do remain healthy. Keep in mind the purpose of the countdown is to help us catch potential issues prior to flight. There are a thousand ways a launch can go wrong and only one way it can go right. Given that, we are overly cautious on the ground and if the team or the vehicle sees anything that just looks even slightly off, they'll stop the countdown. Again, the vehicle and the payload are in good health. But this will end our launch attempt for today. The next launch opportunity is tomorrow at the same time, 7.29 a.m. Pacific. Hopefully you'll join us. Thanks for joining us today, and we'll see you next time. And there you have it. We have scrubbed for today. Well, if you are just joining us, welcome here to the launch pad. At T minus three seconds, we had an abort to launch of SDA tranche zero. Sounds like we're going to go for another attempt tomorrow, right at the same time. So we hope you'll join us back here for that. Here at the launch pad, it's our mission to inform and inspire the explorers of tomorrow because we believe that space is better together. And we were glad to have you joining us here this morning. Make sure you join us over on the TLP Discord. That's where our community hangs out in between launches and follow us on twitter to stay up to date on all the latest space news from but from tlp hq my name's zach i'll see you tomorrow have a good day bye, -bye.